Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking down the Windows server and migrating everything that was running there, all the services and other servers, over to the Unraid server. I've realized that I'm kind of wasting resources on my Windows server, so that's kind of the uh, whole purpose of this move um, from Windows to Unraid. And we're going to be shutting down the Windows server, not permanently, uh, but there won't be any hard drives available to it anymore. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. And we're also going to rip out any extra RAM and we're going to completely max out the Unraid server. Uh, so I guess without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So I've pretty much already backed up everything I need off of my Windows server, uh, I hope. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and shut it down, uh, not without much remorse here, and call it a day with that. Now the, one of the problems that we're probably going to run into here soon is my Ubuntu, I'm sorry, uh, my Unify controller that runs on my Ubiquiti gear currently runs on a Ubuntu server on the Windows machine. So we're going to have to rebuild that on the Unraid server, um, which shouldn't be too hard to do. At least it wasn't last time. Well, it kind of was. But I think I know what I'm uh, doing, so I should be able to do that again. So, uh, well, that's certainly shut down, so let's go ahead and uh, work with that server. All right, so I'm just... Pretty much sitting back here I'm just gonna rip out all these cables that are plugged in because I no longer need power now I think I am gonna leave the uh, additional NIC cards I have in here in place just in case I decide to do something in the future but for now I'm just gonna rip everything out and we are no longer gonna need it I didn't realize how much stuff was actually plugged into here never really know here start taking some of it apart right all right uh, let's go ahead and move it out now it should slide right on out with nothing preventing it looks like i'm grabbing the server beneath and i gotta be careful with these rails because in one of the last videos i think when i did my live stream actually the the server literally fell fell off the rails and i had to catch it and i think it was this one in fact this one's bending a lot already uh but whatever so let's remove this case try to there we go now, as you may or may not recall from a previous video, um, I installed these Noctua fans to be right on top of the CPU heat sinks because they were um, getting really hot uh, to the point where um, I was having thermal throttling and some other issues. Uh, so I've replaced that and the problem has since gone away. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna take these heat sinks off uh, and put them on the other server or not. Uh, that remains to be seen, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and start ripping out all of this RAM. Again, I'm not quite sure how much I have in the other server. I've almost completely forgotten. Uh, but if I do recall, these are supposed to be either eight or, yeah, these are eight gigabyte sticks of Samsung ECC RAM. Um, so if we fill the other server up, I think that'll put me at, um, I'm not actually sure, maybe like, 256 gigs of RAM. Uh, hell, I don't even know what I'm currently at now, but for the case, we will get there when we can. Always forget how hard it is to uninstall RAM that's been sitting in somewhere for a while. I'm sitting inside of a chassis for a little while. Although I think installing RAM is actually my favorite because it's the easy one of the easiest things to do and it looks cool. I don't know, whatever the case. So, in case you're wondering why I don't just pull out the USB 2.0 stick and stick it in here uh, that actually houses the Unraid operating system, well, one of the reasons why is because this server has a particular issue where the BIOS um, uses up too much onboard storage. So, it can actually boot um, by itself without user intervention. So I literally have to press F1 to skip some boot thing uh, to get it to get the server to boot to Windows. Well, now you might be thinking, oh well, why don't you just flash the BIOS? Well, I've tried that, but Quanta, the per the manufacturer who makes this, doesn't provide a BIOS that will actually install on here because there's not enough RAM on the server itself. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what else I need from here. I think I'm gonna take go ahead and take these out. Probably won't need those. So anyway. Uh, I can't install a new BIOS because there's not enough RAM uh, or storage on the actual BIOS itself. BIOS chip or whatever you want to call it. 
So maybe one day I'll actually play around with that again since there's nothing in here that's important. <sighs> Debating on whether I should take these SSDs out of here from the rear or not. I think it was just gonna be everything. Everything I don't need, I'm just gonna remove it. So both SSDs for the actual operating system are removed. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna leave the graphics card and these in here for now and take those out later if needed. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, mistake number one. I turned the Unify controller off a little bit too soon because I actually need that. And because I've been using host names for a while, I don't actually know the IP address of my Unraid server, so I can't uh, access the web GUI to shut it down nice and nice and easy. Um, so what I have done, because I know the, uh, I don't know, the, the router's IP address, I've SSH into the um, Unify router, router? Ugh, I cannot speak, the Unify router, and I did a, a command called show ARP, and it gives me a list of all the IP addresses currently active on the network. So I don't know specifically which one is, um, is the Unraid server, but I do know that it is more than likely between seven and 12, uh, just because, I don't know, maybe some false memory I have somewhere. So I'm, I'm actually just gonna start with uh, dot 12. Oh, sweet. Talk about luck of the draw. So I know you guys probably can't see this too well, um, but basically I'm just gonna have to stop Unraid here um, so we can add more RAM to it and we can add uh, more hard drives to it. So literally in order to shut this down, uh, I believe I have to stop the RAID first, uh, or I'm sorry, not the RAID. I have to stop the array first. So I'm doing that now. Should only take a moment. All right, so now that the array is stopped, I can power down the system. Um, so I'm literally just gonna power it down and it beeped at me, which scared the hell out of me, but we should be good to go now. So as soon as the power is down, uh, we're gonna open it up and add some more hardware to it. All right, let's go ahead and crack the Unraid server open. And there we go. Oh, sweet, I totally forgot I still had the cover on this. So maybe as an experiment, what we should do is actually leave the stock heat sinks on here, uh, as well as uh, this, uh, Wow, I can't remember the name of this thing. Anyway, we should leave this cover on here to help the airflow uh, go through and better cool the heat sinks, hopefully. And take out all these plastic pieces real quick that are protecting the RAM slots. And we're gonna upgrade the snap out of this, out of this server. All right, all these things are removed, so let's go ahead and start adding the RAM stick by stick. And this is the awesome part. Each stick of RAM will make this more awesome. I have no idea how much will fit in here, or even if it's compatible, but we're gonna do it anyway and troubleshoot my problems later. And I can't see it the stick of RAM in. And yes, I know I'm a terrible singer. But who cares? Who cares? I am too excited. All right, enough of that. All right. Wow. I'm grabbing, I made a pile of RAM over here yet. I'm grabbing from a different pile. Good job, me. All right. This might actually take a minute because I'm actually having some trouble getting it in. <laughs> like always. Lots of RAM goes into the slots. I wish I had like a tool to press these down because just make it go by slightly faster. One thing I am I do like now that I have a server rack is that I can just slide out uh, those servers on the rails and then just put all of the RAM in. Uh, or, I mean, work on it as I need to. And it makes things way easier. Come on. 
Get down in there. All right. We are nearing completion. Right. One CPU is full of RAM. So let's keep going. I didn't even bother counting this. I may not even have enough sticks, which would be pretty funny if you think about it, uh, to get all the way to the end and be like, oh no, I don't have enough RAM. Or even worse, I'm gonna put all the RAM in here and then I'm gonna be like, oh, well, I wanna boot up the other server just for fun and I'm not gonna have enough RAM for both of the CPUs in there, which would also be kind of entertaining. And I'll have to check with the wifey to see if I can order more RAM which she'll probably let me do if I, uh, you know, get her a gift or something. Boom, baby, it's completely full. All right, so I just had this thought while I was putting all this RAM in here. I'm actually gonna take out these CPUs and replace them. These are 2650 version one CPUs. Inside of the Windows server is 2670 V1s. And I'm gonna swap them out because I actually want my Unraid server to have a slight speed boost since it's gonna be doing the majority of work now. And I'm also gonna stop using the cache drive as a, a scratch drive for Plex. Now that I have more RAM, I'm actually gonna use my RAM uh, for Plex while it does all the transcoding. Shouldn't see a difference, but I got plenty of RAM, so why ruin the drive? So let's go ahead. Wow, that was loud. But apologize for all that noise. So let's go ahead and uh, actually remove those CPUs. All right, so we are going to take these copper heat sinks as well. And we are going to take the CPUs as well, something I originally didn't intend to do, but you know, or you may know, my shenanigans by now. I just kind of do things on the fly and make decisions on the fly. Now what will be really interesting is when this cover actually doesn't fit over these heat sinks, so maybe we should test that real quick. Oh, okay, they do fit, perfect. So we will be taking them. All right, so, oh, I didn't unscrew that one all the way, apparently. Is that it? Sweet. One heat sink removed. Let's go ahead and clean this beastie up real quick. I don't know why I'm in a singy mood today. I will try and keep that down to a minimum for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully not to chase anybody off. All right, that one. Wow, this thermal paste really stays on here. All right, so that's one. Let's clean the CPU off real quick. Bon de va. Say so that's pretty clean. And let's go ahead and get the next CPU ready for transplant. I'm surprised it's not more dusty in here because there is an extreme amount of dust on the actual hard drives. And uh, I typically come in here with a vacuum cleaner and dust it off as best as I can, but there is always a lot. And actually, I can see a lot of dust building up around the RAM sockets here, which is potentially a bad thing. Potentially. Sorry, I got really focused on cleaning this copper heat sink for some reason. These copper heat sinks are absolutely phenomenal. They do a great job of helping keep the CPUs cool because they actually have a vapor chamber, probably hard to tell from here, uh, but they do. And I love them. And I forgot to clean the last CPU here. Move these out of the way for now because we will not need them. They would probably fall from here, but that is a risk I'm willing to take. All right, let's go ahead and remove these CPUs and prepare them for transplant into the other server. Oh God, I can't even pick it up. All right, not too bad. And since I have all of these, I think I'm just gonna stick them in here anyway. Not that they're needed by any means. But, oh wait, I actually have extra RAM. So let's stick this RAM in here. Uh, so it looks like I have exactly four sticks left. So we will be on single channel memory for both future CPUs. But at least they will be 16 gigs. I have no idea if this is even the right order. 
this is actually a little bit of trial and error. So future me will either hate myself or thank myself if I do this correctly the first time. I'm pretty sure I'm doing this correct. All right. That's not good. That's not good. Okay, and now last but not least. Oh, this isn't even last. I actually have one more stick. All right, now let's fill this beastie up with blank. I don't even know what they're called. With blanks, with little plastic pieces to protect the slots as best as possible. Now, I probably really don't need these, but since I have them, I'm going to use them. And I actually have a lot more in storage somewhere. I should bust them out, but let's be honest here, that's not going to happen. And since the server's not going to be on anyway, I probably don't need these. So one of the real reasons why I'm taking the time to do this is because I don't want to go into storage and find where I may or may not have hidden these making another giant mess when I could just slide these in here and be done with it. And that is what I am going to do. Now, I actually lost the other cover, so there's no, um, what the hell? So there's no fan cover to actually put over this, which is gonna be real interesting. Come on, get in there. I should go look for that because it's kind of an important piece especially if I decide to boot this thing on in the future and the stock heat sinks are not that good um, so we are going to close this for now hopefully nothing falls in there and we're gonna get it out of the way oh hey there's an extra one we will put you in here all right off we go Oh, oh, no need for all that crashing. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and remove these heat sinks. So the stock ones are actually pretty decent, um, but they are not particularly the best. And one of the problems I have in the old, or I'm sorry, with the current Unraid server is that if I'm encoding a video that is H265, or if I'm playing back a video that is H265, I actually get a thermal throttling. So the it, the uh, CPU will do, be doing a lot of work, everything will be going fine, and then out of nowhere, it will uh, just freeze up and or uh, lock up the system until I close the 256 encode. Something that's a bit strange if you ask me. But it happens. All right, both heat sinks are removed, so we're gonna clean these off somewhat quickly. All right, that one's clean. And just need to clean this heat sink. Clean as well. Get off any residue with another cotton ball. I don't even know if you guys can see me doing this. I'm just kind of working over here and assuming that you can actually see me do things. But I know you can see me clean the CPUs. So I will do that. Clean off any residue. Do the same for the other CPU. And we will be good to go to make the transplant of said systems. Oh, geez, I think I must have missed a spot. Okay, this one's actually really dirty. <laughs> I'm, I don't know if I'm making it worse or better, but I keep finding little hidden spots of, of uh, thermal paste, apparently. All right, and clean it one more time. Wunderbar. Now that both CPUs are clean and heat sinks, we are gonna make the swap of the 26 
50s with the 26 70s. So I know that they're supposed to line up some magic way, but I never figured it out. I would just kind of drop them in and get lucky. Oh, put that in incorrectly. Like, put that in correctly like a mofo. Alright, so drop it down. What's going on here? What's going on here? Drop it down. Close the latch. Close the other latch. And we are good there. Unlatch. Unlatch. Grab the CPU. Grab the new CPU. Place it in gently. Close the latch. Boom. Both CPUs are swapped. Okay, so now that CPUs are in, we're just going to add a little bit of thermal compound. This is Arctic Silver, of course. What else is there? Now, I'm going to be a little bit more generous than I usually would be uh, because when I ripped off the heat sinks, it looks like they actually didn't have um, as good of a or as much contact with the thermal paste as I would normally like. Um, so adding a little bit more should solve that problem. And now we just have to stick on the heat sinks themselves. And line it up. First one's on. All right. Should take what a second or a minute, whatever you want to call it. Oh, that one wasn't going on there for a second, so uh, I got a little nervous, but it eventually did complete. And I just stick the next one on. Oh gosh, try not to move it around too much. All right, that should be aligned. And screw it down from each corner. At least that's the way I've always done it, just maybe naturally or being told one of the two. Nonetheless, I always do it the same way out of consistency. All right. All right, both uh, heat sinks are in place. We just get rid of the old ones real quick. At least get them out of the way. And double paste, clean up just a tad. Okay, so the next big thing that we have to decide is what we're gonna do with the cache. So the cache drive currently is a Samsung um, 250 gigabyte hard drive. Do I wanna replace that with two of these? Or, I think these are 100 and or these are 240 each, or all right, I found one, or do I want to place the crap or put the crap? the crash, crash cache drives with one of these. I'm thinking maybe I should use these instead and then use these for virtual machines. Uh, I think that's the best plan because I have two of these as well. And these are 480 ter terabytes, gigabytes each. I don't even know where the second one is. So I have a problem when, there it is. So probably do that. So two of these will be for virtual machines uh, maybe even like fast tran transfer cache now because that's the job of these. So 240, it's 480 gigabytes of transfers. That should be enough. So we're going to make these our new cache drives. I'm going to get rid of the Samsung one. Uh, the Samsung one I will maybe just keep as like a side drive for other projects, maybe for the previous server. And then these will be for virtual machines or I don't know, other stuff. So we'll figure that out. All right, so I've got to remove this stupid drive. All right, so I'm actually going to put this cover back on real quick because I keep hitting it with my foot, and I'm tired of doing that. So that's there. So now you may recall from a very uh, old video or a previous video that I don't have screws that actually fit these uh, drive caddies very well because what they end up doing is actually hitting the 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 mounting point for them and I can't 
get them mounted correctly or they'll scratch up the drives below them or they just won't slide in all the way. So I use tape to help me get this Samsung on here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this off. Ooh. I um, should probably mount that a little bit better next time. So I use tape to help me do accomplish that with a Samsung drive. We won't be doing that again for sure. Um, I have a couple of drives that I have in mind or not drives, I have a couple of screws that I have in mind that I'd like to try and use. Okay, so none of these other screws are gonna work. Not a single one of them I tried. I only have one that's gonna work. We're gonna put this one on top and we are gonna just stick this one on bottom very ghettoly. So, all right, so the first drive literally is not being held down by anything except gravity itself and it is in place. And the second drive, which is being held down by a screw, I am trying to push in right now. And that one fits, but only barely. So nice and secure. All right, so I think we're done playing around with the inside of this. Um, and we may be good to go um, to boot it back up. Yep, I can't think of anything, so I am just going to go ahead and close this back up. And we will power it on and add a whole bunch of new drives to the array. All right, before we actually move on, I am going to reinstall these other heat sinks before I forget. So I already put the CPUs in place, just adding some Arctic Silver Thermal Compound to both CPUs. Also, again, being somewhat generous, more so than before. And just got to stick the... Heat sinks on. I hope I line that up correctly. I am totally massacring this. All right, that looks good enough. So we'll install the first one and then we'll get the second one. All right, cool. So this server, oh crap, I gotta pull it all the way out to put the lid back on. If I can. Seems to be a little stuck. And I pulled it off the rail. Perfect. Just like last time. Well, this is gonna be fun. All right, hopefully that will hang there by itself for a moment so I can get situated to pull it off completely from the rack. Yeah, this top server just really keeps coming up with a boatload of issues in order for me to, oh God, totally almost dropped it there. Okay, let's try and get that back in. This isn't gonna work. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Come on. Okay, cool. Definitely got it back on. Whew. That was a close one. All right. Okay, good enough. So placement of the new drives is actually pretty important. I think I'm gonna put all SSDs um, from here on out on this back plane. So the entire back plane is actually supported by two different types of controllers. There's an Intel controller and an LSI storage controller. So that's why I'm gonna put all of the SSDs on this side because this half, like maybe this many drives, I'm not entirely sure, is controlled by the Intel storage controller which coincidentally also the two SSDs on the rear are controlled by the same controller. So that is my reasoning for why I'm putting them over here. Does it really make a difference? Probably not because Unraid doesn't really deal with raids anyway. But just for consistency sakes, I think it'll help me in the long run. So yes, I am installing these drives a little bit strangely because again, I don't have um, screws that actually will let these trays slide incorrectly and support drives. So I have to do things all jankily, of course. Man, these things are really dusty. I'm gonna have to bring a vacuum in here. Maybe I should vacuum first before I actually put them in here. Oh, uh, well, maybe later. 
and I don't know how I'm gonna get this Samsung SSD in here. Oh, that's right, I'm not gonna use it. So I'm actually just gonna put it in here so it's loose. That way if I ever need it in the future, I can just grab it. Okay, what else do I have to do? I think that's it hardware-wise. I should be good to go now. All right, well, SSDs are installed. Um, all the previous drives, I think I'm just gonna leave in here as kind of like legacy drives because I don't use them anyway. Or if I decide to spin up uh, a server, server 2016 or another edition of Windows, um, it will be ready to go with a, a old existing hard, hardware uh, and virtual machines. Um, so I can still play around with those if I need to. So now let's get Unraid booted back up. Oh, I gotta plug everything in. <laughs> so I had originally intended to actually show you guys the process of you know, Unraid booting up, adding the hard drives to the array, and then some of the problems that I occurred, but the video footage I recorded as well as uh, screen captured came out very blurry and I was missing parts of it for some reason, so I think I ran out of space on my camera, which I should really look into because that's been happening a lot to me lately. But for now, that's besides the point. So I did end up getting everything added to the array. There was a problem that I ran into where one of the disks wasn't being discovered, so I just replugged everything back in, made sure it was nice or seated nice and tight. Got everything added, Unraid booted up fine. I installed Ubuntu server like I had it originally intended. Uh, that went off without a hitch, and I do have the video footage for that, but it's, again, very blurry and you can't really see everything. Then I also got the Unify controller and Unify video installed on the Ubuntu server as well. So after all of that was finished, I then had a problem with one of my hard drives. Listen to this. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. But luckily I got a replacement drive in and was able to add it back to the server and back to the array and everything went off from there without a hitch until a little bit later on. So just when you finish getting Unraid back up and running and everything working just fine, you get another failed hard drive. Now, it's not really Western Digital's fault that these hard drives are failing. It's actually my fault because as you may have seen from the previous video or the previous videos, uh, I did bang around these uh, these hard drives a lot, or maybe not the hard drives, but the servers were getting banged around a lot because I was, you know, putting equipment on there or moving equipment. So I got a replacement hard drive in uh, from Western Digital, and uh, all we have to do is add this back to my array. And this one shouldn't take too long. It's only a terabyte hard drive, uh, so yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I already got the uh, Western Digital Red Drive replaced. I don't remember if I even showed that or not in the last video. Uh, but basically, it was just as easy as popping it in there, just like this, and then configuring it in Unraid. So let's go do that real quick as well. Okay, so obviously you can see the disk is not installed. Uh, Unraid does not see it. Um, so all we have to do is stop the array. It should only take a moment. And also I am missing another disc and that is because I have uh, simply removed that SSD that was in there. It was a Samsung uh, 950 SSD. I took that out for another project that I will be doing here shortly. Um, but that will probably remain out or I might put it back in. Don't really know, we'll see. All right, so now we're just gonna assign that disc. It's the only one in there that is not assigned so it's a pretty easy fix. And then we just start the array and we are pretty much done. So that'll automatically get rebuilt uh, or cleaned and cleared and, all, and formatted uh, by Unraid. So we don't really have to do much from here. Uh, the parody will do its thing to rebuild this drive as necessary and we're pretty much done. This video probably would have been a lot longer had I recorded all the issues I was experiencing. I didn't do that because it's really a time factor. I could record every, really, every little thing and put it into one ginormous video uh, but that takes forever and then I've got to edit it and that takes even longer. I just didn't feel like it. But some of the problems I did end up having was my internet went down for some reason and I couldn't figure out why. I called my service provider and they're like, oh, we see your modem online, everything looks fine. But then it turns out that my UPS was actually bad. So I have a coax line that comes from my ISP that goes into my UPS uh, to protect it from surges. And then that coax line goes to my modem and 
that's how I essentially get internet from my ISP. Well, all of that was working, but then when it goes back from ethernet cable to my ups, there was a problem with that port. So after switching it to one of my other UPSs, uh, everything ended up turning out fine, I had internet again, and then my router decided to start acting up. So I'm not sure if it was because the multiple modem and router reboots or what happened, but my, my, my access point, my Linksys router, uh, it's, it's actually an access point, not a router right now, that ended up actually breaking for some reason, so I had to reset that. And then the other hard drive failed and I had to wait for a replacement for that. So it was, it was a multitude of problems that ended up being like this crazy mess. And I've even, I haven't even mentioned the RAM issues I had. Unraid was running for a little while and as, and it would just suddenly crash uh, pretty much randomly. And I couldn't figure out why, mainly because I didn't look at log files or anything like that like I should have. But it turns out that I had not just one bad stick of RAM, not just two bad sticks of RAM, but four bad sticks of RAM. It took me forever to figure out what the problem was, or not really what the problem was, but which which RAM sticks were bad. It took it probably took a solid two days. I don't even remember how long it took, to be honest, but it, it felt like it took forever. So I had to steal RAM from the other server and then put that into the Unraid server so I could have my full 192 gigabytes of RAM. And yeah, you know, do I need 192 gigabytes of RAM on my Unraid server? No, not really. But I did it anyway. So now my other server is offline because I don't have RAM. I might buy some more or just steal some from Unraid. I don't really know what I'm going to do with that just yet. I, I barely even have a use for it now. Um, but we'll see. You know, there's there's plenty of things that we can do in the future to kind of play around with that. And uh, there are some things that I, I want to do to explore Plex a little bit more and improve my overall streaming experience even though... It's actually been very good this entire time anyway. So after all of that being said and done, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.